well, now let's talk about coming to America. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, let's talk about the old one, and let's talk about this new one. Coming to America, how ironic you get cast as, is it Cleo? Cleo, Cleo McDowell. Cleo McDowell, and you are the owner of the chain. Yeah. Big wig. How ironic your McDonald's younger experience circles around to this role here. Again, that showed me God's sense of humor. Amen. When you were making Coming to America with Eddie Murphy, who's at the height of his career, all-star, not all-star cast. They weren't stars, all of them. Shari Headley became a star after Coming to America. Mm -hmm. Madison Sinclair came from the theater, worked all her life, but... God rest her soul. God rest her soul. But she really, really shined as a beautiful black queen in Coming to America. Yeah. Louis Anderson, Sam yeah. Jackson. What was it like when you were working on the set of Coming to America, the first one, did you feel any magic? You know we felt magic on the sequel set. But did you feel any magic? Did you Were you doing this and you were having fun? Did you know it was going to affect the culture the way that it did? None of us knew that the film was going to be as successful as it ultimately proved Across the country, you know, and, yeah. and beyond, all across the board. Yeah. None of us came even close to uh, approximating what it was going to gross and how popular it was going to be. And to this day, I still get people saying they love the film, and it holds up after all these years. It so certainly does. Good comedy does that. Do you think it put Queens on the map? Or did LL tell do me that? It did. They tell me it did. And put Queens on the map. You were so funny, so thirsty. When you found out that Prince Hakeem had that money. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like, wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> Boy got his own money. Yeah, yeah. You even had some catchphrases and stuff that uh, that people were saying like around town, stuff like, I don't give a damn who you are. This is America, Jack. Now you say more and more word about Lisa. I'm going to break my foot off in your royal ass. You right. Know saying that. <laughs> and they gave me the luxury of uh, the privilege of ad-libbing that line because Good. the line they had originally written, we found out when we did the read-throughs the first day, the entire cast is assembled and we do a read-through of the script, as you well know. Yeah. And the line they had for me was something to the effect of, um, you, you insult my daughter like that again, and I'm going to drop you like a bad habit. And I said, no, I need something stronger. Stronger this is a, than that. This is a father talking about his daughter. I got to let him know this man is this man is uh, toying with his life here. So uh, I ad-libbed the line. Didn't, didn't uh, you know, announce it to anybody. I just went ahead and ad-libbed it. Yeah. And Eddie fell out. And he's got the most unique laugh. I yes. you've been around it. Sound like a mule in heat. Yeah. <laughs> donkey. <laughs> Sounds like that donkey. Right. So when Eddie Eddie's reaction that sealed it, he said, "Yeah, that's him." I'm gonna tell you this. I'm gonna tell you this one time. You want to keep working here? Stop the drugs. Right. <laughs> Catchphrases. Good. It, it was it was a good script, and we made it better through the freedom we had with the ad libs. I have done table reads before, and when you close the script, you're like, "Oh my God." This is gonna be something. Yeah. What was the what was the feeling after you guys did the, did the table read the first time before any wardrobe, before any locations, before anything? Well, even before that, uh, I I was called to Paramount to read, to, to no, not to read, but just to meet with John Landis, who directed the first one. Mm. And when he got to the, when he was describing, just describing without reading from the script, describing the. Uh, the older couple that came with the, the man that had the husband had the Jerry curl and left the Jerry curl stains on the couch. Yeah, I fell off of his couch. I laughed so hard. I mean, I'm, I'm I love comedy and I love to laugh. To me, it's the most genuine form of entertainment there is. If you can make some a complete stranger laugh, and they made me fall out on the floor. I mean, I was screaming. So that was it. John Landis and I got along great, and um, when when I saw that that he had written in that scene where the couples had left uh, Jerry Carl Stains on the, on the uh, couch. I was finished. I was I just left myself sick. Once again, a great father role, the chemistry between you and Shari Headley. Yeah. Your daughter Lisa, very oh, it loving. Was easy. It was easy because she's a, a wonderful actress, 
and she's a very, very, not just an attractive lady, but also a very warm, very warm actress. Look at me and the McDonald's people. We got this misunderstanding. See, they're McDonald's. I'm McDowell's. They got golden arches. Mine is golden, golden arches. Golden arcs, right. <laughs> they got the Big Mac. I got the Big Mick. Mick. <laughs> yeah, McDowell, the character I portrayed, well, he was a little bit of a con man. Oh, you think? Just a little Total bit. Total ripoff. It was, it was hilarious, though. We both got two all beef patties, special sauce, lettuce, cheese, pickles, onions, but their buns have sesame seeds. My my buns don't have no sesame seeds. Right. <laughs> Distinguishing difference, right? Right, big diff. Because, God, I'll go across town for them sesame seeds. The hell? So, you had the premiere. Where was the premiere? You know, I can't recall. Must have been a good premiere. <laughs> 